Hello, I'm Harry Massoudi, your host at Epistemi Entrepreneur, uh, the podcast dedicated to sciences entrepreneurs and deep tech startups. Today, I have the pleasure to receive as a guest Ms. Hima Dari, Hima Dari Patak, computer scientist by training. She is the founder CEO of Checkmat, founded in 2019, a brilliant educational tech startup. Uh, hello, Hima Dari. How are you today? Hello, Dr. Ari. Thank you for having me in this podcast. Really excited and I'm really good. How are you doing? Thank you very much. Uh, please uh, just call me Ari. It's, uh, it's yeah, an okay. old person, you know, so <laughs> <laughs> please just call me Ari. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's, uh, could you please introduce a little bit yourself and, uh, and your study at uh, Luxembourg and what did you study and why STEM in particular? Yeah. Um, actually, I always uh, enjoyed mathematics when I was a young person and uh, my mother was also a mathematician, so she inspired me for mathematics. Um, and also I was very interested by video games and so I decided that I wanted to do something that would enable me to make video games and that's why I selected computer science um, for my you know, formation. And um, during my computer science, I, I actually did make three games, two by myself and one as a team for a competition. Wow. Uh, but they sucked. <laughs> so <laughs> the ones that I made by myself sucked. <laughs> but it's it was anyways a pleasant, really, really exciting experience to be able to make something from, from nothing, from code um, that excited me. So I, I decided I wanted to uh, pursue this kind of creative um, expression to be able to create something from tech also for my master's. And that's why I selected uh, uh, computer science for my master's. But uh, also I was very interested by the latest emerging technologies like computer vision, AI. Uh, and that's why I was interning also at a, as, at a research lab uh, to kind of get into research and see you know, how things work over there. Um, and so yeah, that, that was kind of my um, journey in terms of computer science. But um, during my master's, I actually realized that um, I need to start looking into other fields. I need to get my hands dirty in all of these different areas to get a feel of, you know, what other things the world has to offer. Um, and actually, um, we in coincidentally had a course called project management. Uh, and the, the course there, the aim was of that course to find a problem and find a solution to that problem implement that solution within the span of a semester and, and show your results. Um, and at that time I was going through kind of a, like a rock star phase, you know, I uh, play the electric guitar, so I wanted to do something for music. Um, and so the problem that I saw in the world was that uh, in, in communities with low income, they obviously don't have the money to afford, you know, these fancy musical instruments. So, um, so that was the problem that I really wanted to solve because music is a way of expressing your creativity and you know, showing off your emotions. Um, and so the solution was uh, that I came up with was to make uh, musical instruments out of scrap materials. Like the, the materials that are thrown away for recycling, take those and assemble them into musical instruments. Uh, and I was so lucky to have such great classmates. So we formed a team within the class. And um, one of my classmates was someone who could do all these handiwork with crafting and, and you know, cutting the wood and wow. doing all this magic. And uh, yeah, we um, actually were able to assemble a electric guitar from a table leg, from a rum box, fishing line. And it actually worked like a guitar. It was, it was uh, super crazy. So that's, you know, all of these entrepreneurial feelings uh, came out for me also. Um, and actually, yeah, so uh, we, we, made that, we made that guitar. We did a lot of uh, other musical instruments. Uh, and um, we actually went to a homeless shelter here in Luxembourg to kind of have a workshop with the people there and you know, make these musical instruments, have a fun session where we forget about our worries for a few minutes, even hours. Um, and actually uh, during that time is uh, when the uh, University of Luxembourg incubator was starting. 
and they had just begun because we are a very young university at the University of Luxembourg. So everything is, you know, uh, everything is very new. And so the incubator was also just getting started at that time. Uh, and um, they, they, they had an opening ceremony and uh, um, they also had a, a competition called Ideation Camp. So since we were making that guitar project, uh, we actually participated in this competition ideation camp. Uh, and uh, we, by that time, our guitar was ready. We played on the guitar for the jury when we pitched our competition. Is there any and, video of this? Of this um, I think yes, I think yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I <wonder> yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> it's, it's funny. Uh, but uh, yeah, we, the jury was really, really impressed. And, you know, everyone loved this idea. <laughs> Uh, and so when the incubator was officially opening, um, in fact, they had invited us guests, uh, the Prime Minister of Luxembourg, you know, the CEO of Cisco, all of these were guests at the opening of the incubator. And we were so honored to be asked to play as the band um, with, with, this, with this, you know, recycled guitar. Um, and yeah, sounds, we, it sounds like a joke, but it's great. Yeah, it sounds like a joke. <laughs> But it's true. There's a video of this, uh, and and we actually played uh, on the guitar with the band and everything. It was it was crazy. So yeah, this this is you know if you, if you actually I just wanted to you know try something new, but in the in the process we ended up doing something so crazy. Uh, so yeah, it's always like when you're a student, don't say no to anything. Just just keep saying yes, and and good things will happen. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's the story. So this is how you ended into the incubator of Luxembourg, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So how uh, did you, um, from there, you know, uh, the, the idea of Checkmate emerged and how did you yeah. find your, your resources? Your, your, do you have some co-founder with you? Yes, yes, okay. yes. Um, yeah, so great question. Um, yeah, so the entrepreneurial bug by that time was like deep inside my veins. Like I knew this was the coolest thing. I want to keep doing this. Um, and so my background is in tech and I am driven by tech, as I told you. And I really wanted to keep continue being in tech. Uh, and during that time, my brother was struggling with mathematics. And I thought about it so much, so much, so much. I couldn't figure out how I can help him. I tried everything. Um, and then that's when the solution came to me that I, I will use tech to help him. And so this idea came to me. So basically my brother was uh, struggling with math because he was not getting good feedback on his, on his math. And he, and you know, he had to wait for feedback. For example, if you give your test, yes, uh, you if you die, you have to wait, right? And by that time, students get disengaged. They, they kind of forget about it. And by the time they get feedback, it's already too late. They've forgotten about it until the exam comes and then you're just sitting there trying to figure out where was I wrong? Why is this wrong? You know, all of these questions start to come in. And, and all of this, you know, kind of loops into students hating mathematics. Um, and um, so I, I tr tried to, you know, go back and ask why, why, why? Until I realized, yes, the answer is to give immediate feedback. And so I, I started tutoring him and just giving him feedback. So I would not explain the topic. I would just tell him, okay, you're wrong here. Can you figure out your mistake? Uh, and he started figuring out his mistakes and he became much, much better in mathematics. And I said, okay, this is where I want to use tech. So, um, so that's when we made our app. And our app, basically what it does is when a student solves a math question step-by-step, step, they can either take a picture of it on the app or write it on the app. And the app will give them immediate feedback on the spot for any question. Yes, I watched the... the... Explain the explainer video you you hosted on your on your website. So yeah. just to explain, of course, I will put all the link uh, below the video interview. So um, you have a problem, a mathematics problem. You can yeah. uh, take a picture, right, of the problem, and, and you have the solution, right, right immediately. How does it work? Exactly? No, no, no. So that's a lot of the applications do that. Yeah. That you have a problem, you take a picture, you get the answers. Yeah. But it's you know the problem. Yeah, it's too easy. And students are just copy pasting the answer into their homework. And we thought, no, this is not the way to learn. If, do you, if you want to active, actively learn, you have to solve it yourself. Um, and so the app, how it works is you have a problem. You can get your problem from anywhere and you have to solve it step by step and then take a picture of all your steps on the app 
and the app will tell you where you're right, where you're wrong okay. automatically. Wow, this is great. <laughs> Thank you. So it, 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 uh, it plays the role of a teacher, of a real yeah. teacher, uh, yeah. an IT teacher who, who line by line say, here you have made a mistake. Wait, yeah, yeah. This is fantastic. <laughs> and, uh, it, was it difficult to, to code? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> it's because we have to re reverse engineer mathematics, you know, to be able to check mathematics, we had to first reverse engineering and that was really, really, really difficult. And when I started, I was I was a solo, um, you know, I was solo for most of the time. Uh, and so I was doing all the business plus the coding, you know, all the back end, all of it. It was obviously challenging. <laughs> It is challenge. Entrepreneurship is challenging. It's not a joke, right? Uh, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so right now you focus only on algorithm, or you have also, or your your you can also um, find the mistake during the geometry exercise, or no, no, no. Right now it's only right. for you know core uh, arithmetic, algebra, right. that that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Step, yeah. by step. <laughs> step by step. Step by step. And we, we also obviously have to wait for computer vision to advance to be able to, you know, uh, open up to, you know, geometry and shapes and sure. seeing the angles within the shapes. All of this. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, we, we feel like we're making some really nice level technology. It's, it's really great and impressive what you already experienced, uh, what, what your app can do. Uh, you know, we will have uh, maybe the quantum computing in the, in the in the next year, and this would bring a lot of power of computing, and so this would completely open a, a new era of, uh, of possibilities. That's really true. Yeah, that's absolutely <laughs> true. True, and you know, we we this is because we were working also. I was working in research also. Uh, that's where I did my master's thesis, and it was also in computer vision. Uh, but I feel like the as a, as a startup you can really take the existing technology and make it into solving a problem. Um, and I felt that during my research, we couldn't do that. We were not we were not implementing to solve real problems. We were really innovating, but after that, there was, that's where I wanted to work at, you know, going the after to solve a problem. Uh, and this is why I chose to, to remain here. I really didn't understand your process of inventing your, your solution because it's very amazing. Uh, when I wrote with a pen and you know, on paper my uh, arithmetic equation with hand, uh, so your app has to understand my handwriting, right? Yes, yes. Wow. So is there is image recognition. This is the possibility yeah. of difficulties. Because you can say, okay, tape it. And if you do mistake, yeah. it's more easy for the computer, you know, to find. But yeah, yeah, yeah. You put a, a level, a, another level of difficulty, which is to recognize my handwriting. You know, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Learn it. That's true. That's true. But uh, it's, it's, you know, the handwriting recognition itself takes many years to do. So I, when we were starting out, it didn't, it does not make sense for us to implement it from scratch. So we are using a third party software to do our to do our mathematical image recognition. So I don't want to take credit for that. That's not what we did. Also, what we did was it's yeah. Also very important to say because uh, an entrepreneur is a soul, is, a, is, a, is a problem solver. So if you have a problem, you have to yeah. search the best solution. If the solution yeah. already exists, you have yeah. to, to, to shortcut everything. You don't need to read yeah. everything. You know, the exactly. Exactly. But uh, I mean, um, you know, so that, so what what is out there was just image recognition. But we realized that not a lot of people have good handwriting, so we had to put a keyboard mode in there <laughs> because you know, it's like even computer vision cannot handle a bad handwriting. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, so you so can recognize your handwriting, find find the mistake because you yes. compare it with uh, with base. Yeah. Uh, and then, so you have to to have all the formula right into your for for yeah for six years. What is the range of the yeah? The, the, the so form? it's aged uh, ten to sixteen. Ten to sixteen. Okay. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so you have a lot of a lot of formula uh, to to yeah, 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 yeah. But as I said, like we don't do geometry. So in some in some ages, you see a lot of geometry that is currently not covered. 
uh, but a lot of the algebra, most of the algebra is covered. Um, but you know what? Let's let's. Uh, do you want to do some uh, equations? We can do. We can do yeah. an easy linear yeah. equation. Okay. So, uh, you want to give some numbers? You want to give me a linear equation? Uh, linear equation. I know. Do do it. Do it. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's do. Um, uh, let's do. I'm I'm writing it on the app. Yeah. Okay. Uh, equals y. Um. It's very simple. Okay, so here's here's what I wrote. Okay, okay. so now I, I didn't take a picture. I just wrote on the uh, canvas and then I, I, I click check here uh, and it is now checking your steps. And I don't know if you can see, but- uh, Yeah, you can see it. Yeah, so it, it's, wow. it's correct. <laughs> you could have make a mistake for me. <laughs> yeah, okay, let, let, me, let me make a mistake. Of course, good, good. I don't point. know you're very good at math, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's 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 make a mistake. So now we make a okay, mistake. Okay, great. <laughs> okay, I see. Uh, we can make two mistakes if you want, uh, and uh, so it will like okay. I will I will explain to you something. Uh, so. Um, yeah, so basically, um, the step was 3x equals 2. Now, the equation was 3x, 3x plus 2 equals 5. So the next step should be 3x equals 3, but I made a mistake too. But then in the third step, I said x equals 2 by 3. So I made a partially correct uh, step here, right? Uh, so th that's, a, that's a different thing. So if you're like, if you're logically thinking correctly, but just made a mistake, then the app can also tell you that you're not completely wrong here. You're partially correct here. And so this is kind of how the app works. So uh, you, you structure and this idea in, with, the, with the help of the incubator and the entrepreneurship program with the Luxembourg University, right? Yeah, so, so we had the tech idea, but obviously we didn't know anything about business. Uh, and so, yeah, the incubator was really there, you know, since the guitar idea. And so they always, yeah, they, they, they were very, very invested in our journey and they still are. And they really helped us structure our business. Then they kept us, uh, they, you know, recommended us to start with their mentorship program. And that's where they got the top class uh, mentors to come mentor us and help us develop our business. Um, and it's thanks to this program that we actually developed the business part of our you know, uh, company as well. So you, the company has been founded 2019, right? Yes. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I started working on this full time in um, September of 2018, but again, I did not know if I wanted to even start this as a company, sure. but in, in 2019 is when I said yes. Wow. Let's incorporate. And you are, what stage of development are you right now? So, okay, so in um, right before the pandemic hit is when our MVP was ready, uh, you know, as a product. And so we were still testing it and it was obviously not the best of products that you have used, but that's the point of an MVP. You don't, you can't be perfect. Uh, and so we, we launched it uh, right before the pandemic and um, yeah, through word of mouth, we got so many downloads, especially in the US. Sure. Um, but, but we realized like our app really needs a improvement. And we realized also in education, you cannot make MVPs because people rely on your, on your software to actually make informed decisions. So, uh, we had to really improve our products. And so that's what we worked on for so long to improve our product. And so what you see now is an improved version of what we had put out, sure. uh, almost a year ago. <laughs> yeah. And Usually, I ask all, always the same question to any uh, educational tech startup: Is how do you see yourself compared to to, to the Fun Academy? You know, they are such a massive success. Uh, you, you can have nearly any kind of teacher online with the Fun Academy for free, and uh, you know, uh, um, of course, it's not. It's uh, it's just um, uh, a human-to-human -human platform. You know, there's only yeah. a human-human. There's no tech. There's no artificial. 
Yeah. In terms of income, IT is, of course, uh, out of the, 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 the platform. But how do you see yourself compared to this uh, way of teaching? Because it's uh, yeah. human based teaching. Yeah. I mean, Khan Academy was there when I was a student, and Khan Academy helped me as a student. And I always, you know, it's so crazy that we go to these schools and everything, but at the end of the day, we still need extra help. And Khan Academy was there for all of us. And so Khan Academy was really an inspiration for, for this app as well. Um, it's it's truly revolutionary and it's it's so, so important to these new kids uh, to have a sort of additional platform where they can seek help. And all of these uh, videos on YouTube, all of these content creators that create these uh, informational content is what we is, is how we prepared for exams. Even even when I was in computer science, <laughs> how we prepared for the exams. So this kind of content um, economy is very very important for for these next generation students. Um, and how we see against them, of course, we are we are not competing with Khan Academy. They are they are the kings. <laughs> we are. We are an additional help software. Just one solution is not enough. It's not a one size fits all. None of the solutions are there. So we are also one of those uh, solutions that can additionally help students. And of course, neither my solution nor Khan Academy, nothing can actually replace a real teacher. The role of a real teacher is the most important thing in this whole process because they are the ones who can understand you also as a human, what you're struggling with. No, no app or, or solution can do that. They can but complement each other because- uh, They can complement each other, exactly. Of course, you, have a, you can have a good teacher who can have a good influence on you and helping you to progress, but you can also have a bad teacher. Of course, uh, we, have, we all experience a bad teacher. And when you have a, this kind of possibility, uh, the, the gap you have is fantastic because they, they can completely unblock, you know, the mind of a yeah. student who is uh, trapped into a, into a, into a dead end, uh, yeah. cognitive, uh, uh, and they can, you know, you know, they can pass and they can, they can progress. Yeah. This is very, very interesting. Yeah. So, yeah. how, uh, sorry, yeah, let's stop it. Yeah, no, I, I was just saying that, you know, in a, when you have to be in a classroom environment, it's also very, very, you know, common that students, when they get stuck, they are very embarrassed to ask their question because they get stuck on simple things that others consider simple, but they get yeah. very embarrassed. And so having a place where they can autonomously do their math without, without being embarrassed is what we wanted to make with this. Very important what you said, because uh, when you are embarrassed because you cannot solve something that, that seems to be easy for the other classmates, yeah. uh, this can be, um, you know, a very negative uh, loop, you know, of... Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, and it's yeah. very important what you do because it helps people to to, to to remain to the competition of, of girls. Yes, yes exactly, exactly. So how do you see yourself now as an entrepreneur, as a, as a, as a boss of a company? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, now we are, we are four people in the company. Wow. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's, you know, you have to learn a lot of things as an entrepreneur. And you always uh, have a new experience every day. And you do something new every day. Uh, and so you need to switch your context really hard in, in your, in your, really fast in your brain. Uh, because every time, every conversation is, is new, you have to switch your context into that conversation, which, is, which was challenging in the beginning. Uh, but... Um, we didn't start off as four. I was I was a solo founder, and I had to do pretty much learn everything from scratch, and that was the most beautiful experience. I mean, very difficult, but at the same time, where else can we learn everything at once? It was it was yeah. So, your team are all in the tech doing you know the the, the coding, or your your the, the CEO and the CTO at the same time. And you have business guy, how is structured your team? Yeah, so uh, I'm doing both tech and business, but mostly business now. Uh, then we have a CTO, he takes care of the tech. Uh, then we have uh, an app developer, uh, he takes care of the app. Um, and then we also have a marketing person and uh, I work with her to uh, do the business development and the marketing. Great. So, and they, they are all uh, students of the university that we're in the network of the incubator or the outside people, how, 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 the, how the team building uh, has been made? 
Yeah, sure. Uh, so the, for example, the, uh, our marketing intern, she's, she's, she's from the University of Luxembourg. Uh, and, uh, but the others, you know, it's all by networking and, and talking to people. And that's how you, you know, get to know new people and, and try to find a, a match. It's also about like when you network a lot, you get lucky more often. <laughs> sure, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's how I found a great, uh, great team. And uh, it's very important to have a good team when you are starting. So do you do you like your life as an entrepreneur? Compare yourself to when you enter the university at the at the year one. Mm -hmm. How did how did you uh, how did you so see yourself in the future at that that moment? Yeah. Was it uh, say you of a startup or was it professor at university or was it I don't know employee no. of a big tech company? What not at all <laughs> <laughs> no i thought i would be doing internship or a job that's you know that's how that's how we start no or, uh no i never had this in my mind but uh yeah i mean the thing is in university you're always under pressure because sometimes as students you leave things to the last minute so in the last minute you have to study a lot <laughs> write a lot of papers and this is every day as an entrepreneur. So I'm kind of used to it because I went from study directly into entrepreneurship. So I always, you know, was living like, like a hectic life. Great, great. great. Uh, your, your journey is, is fascinating and your tech, your tech startup is uh, very important. Uh, Thank you. Very important uh, because uh, the mathematics uh, is a, a very key uh, in, the, in the success of every student, uh, of every people on the planet. So I, I, I wish you a, a planetary success. And Thank if, you so much. <laughs> and if you have uh, one advice to give to younger students who, who dream of becoming a startup CEO, what, what would, would be your advice? Yeah, it's like when you're, when you're in, uh, in uh, school or college, don't say no to things. Just keep saying yes. Because you never know what uh, kind of miracle you will land into, uh, how lucky you can get. Uh, you never know all of these things, and you might actually find something that you enjoy doing much more than what you thought you would be uh, doing. So that great, would be my advice. Great advice. Say yes to opportunities. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. As a student, yes. As an entrepreneur, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have time. You <laughs> don't have time. Thank yeah. you very much for the Thank very, you so much for having me. Thank you so much. It was a real pleasure. And, uh, uh, no, we, follow, uh, we follow your startups and see how you're going because it's very fascinating and very important. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Good luck. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.